Welcome. This time we are in the beautiful eye of the sky. We are Andy and Shida. Uh, hi guys. Um, we're going to go to the eye of the sky and we're going to explore a, a few places on the eye of the sky. But we are here for only two days. I don't know how far, how much we can do. Yeah, I, I don't know where we're going. I'm just doing the driving. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, she's done all the planning. <laughs> um, yeah, looking forward to and um, let's explore. Of course, before the exploring is a good breakfast. We stopped at the side of Loch Ausch for a good home cooked breakfast with a stunning view. You cannot beat the classics. Egg and toast for coffee. It was epic. If the views are anything what's to come, we're in for a treat. After filling up, we set off over the bridge and into sky. Construction on the bridge began in 1992 with the Secretary of State Michael Forsyth opening the crossing three years later. Initially a toll was charged but after protest the toll scheme was ended on the 21st of December 2004. So the first place we went to was Spa Cave and mm. it's a sea cave so don't make the mistake we did in um, going there at high tide um, it's um, we that's why we don't have any footage of, of, of us in the spa cave even though the cave was unavailable due to the tides we thoroughly enjoyed the journey as the views were stunning in the car the windy roads through the mountains were an absolute driver's paradise However, I would suggest to avoid them in August because I guess they're going to be completely overrun by fellow tourists and they are very narrow. Now, yeah. I would say we're in a Sligachan and just to see the uh, river and waterfall. Uh, it's been quite dry, so um, not much uh, waterfall action going on, but uh, river and the riverbeds are absolutely beautiful the river itself is a very beautiful place to dip your feet in cool off it's right next to the uh, road which the uh, pictures don't show so it's very accessible just come back to um fairy pools um we went here a few years ago and they've absolutely ruined it uh, it's this big uh, gravel track and the new bridge that you used to have to jump across stones on the river and that, it was all really nice but uh, now it's just a massive dirty track all the way through the middle of the big scar on the valley I know it had a dirt track but it was a bit of a scar but it looked a bit more natural this is that's yeah sorry that's my moan but uh, last time I came here it was much better now that is spectacular, I will say. It's so hot I could swim in that, but I'm not going to. The fairy pools are linked to tales of the Selkies. These legendary water creatures disguise themselves as seals during the day, but at night they came ashore at Glenrittle Beach, where they shed their skins. Then in human form they would bathe in the fairy pools under the magical Ning. I'm guessing these are just plain old tourists bathing today. Everyone was needing a good cool off because it was boiling. I was amazed at the temperature in Scotland. Many locals recommended the oyster shed. Unfortunately, the car park was full when we turned up. So we parked a couple of minutes up the road, which made us five minutes late for closing and we were unable to sample any of their uh, delicacies. I was really gutted. So we um, made some chili con carne, um, which at home, uh, vegan chili con carne, but it still tastes good. Um, and we're eating uh, chili today because uh, we went to the oyster shed at about five past five, which uh, closed at five. So.
Hey guys, we're in uh, Dunbiggin Castle right now, and we'll show you around. Dunbiggin Castle is one of the oldest inhabited castles, home of the clan MacLeod for over 800 years. The castle has a rich history and has witnessed significant events throughout the century. The castle features a unique architectural style with a mixture of medieval and more modern elements. As a must-visit destination for history enthusiasts, castle lovers and those seeking the natural beauty of the Isle of Skye. In addition to the castle itself, the grounds of Dunvegan Castle are renowned for their natural beauty. Unfortunately, because I have a dog in a van, I had to take a quick cat nap whilst uh, Shudder was exploring this wonderful castle. I think I really missed out. The castle and grounds are a major tourist attraction and they're open in tourist season, generally from April through to October. Next we set off on our way to Nice Point Lighthouse. This is a well-known tourist attraction known for its beautiful um, coastline and its stunning landscapes. Really looking forward to see this. The roads themselves were uh, very small, windy, narrow roads up and down through the hills. Stunning drive. Quite scary in a van really. The main path to the lighthouse covers a distance of 2.2 kilometers with an average time to complete the walk being about 45 minutes. Nice Point Lighthouse is a prominent lighthouse located on the westmost point of the Isle of Skye. The area itself has sheer cliffs dropping down into the sea. They are very stunning but not for the faint hearted. It's also well known for its natural beauty and wildlife where you can see whales or dolphins. I was lucky enough to see a whale out in the distance. At least I think it was a whale and not a dolphin. The lighthouse itself, designed by David Adam Stevenson, was built in 1909. It's built to guide ships around the treacherous waters. It's very popular for visitors to come to photograph the lighthouse during sunrise and sunset. I can certainly see why. The area itself is absolutely stunningly beautiful. It has an abundance of wildlife and it would just be a photographer's dream that I could sit there and stare out at the sea for hours. It was breathtakingly beautiful. Next we headed over to the Sky Museum of Island Life. You want ice cream? I'm looking confused because it was unsure in which flavour was which. The museum is situated in a collection of old thatched cottages known as black houses, which were once common on the island. These traditional houses were made of stone with thick walls and thatched roofs. I would say that the location was absolutely breathtaking. However, the museum itself was fairly small. This is one that's very popular on YouTube, but um, I was a little bit disappointed if I'm honest. The Isle of Skye is quite a large island and the roads themselves are very small and windy. So I think I may have just been a little bit ratty from the amount of driving it took to get here. And just driving around the island takes forever. 
Inside the Sky Museum of Island Life, visitors can explore the various rooms and exhibits that depict different aspects of traditional island life. The museum displays a range of artifacts, tools and household items that the islands used in the past. The museum itself was also dog friendly. Baby, you're not allowed to go there. You're gonna become hooligan. again. Here we have the local blacksmith. Here you can see me modelling our uh, fantastic midge net. Boy, it makes me look like a sexy bank robber. The uh, midges were a problem. Uh, however, not so much if you're staying in accommodation and you're not up in the crack of dawn or out late in the day. The midges come out generally in the evenings and early mornings, so campers, be aware. Spot tip. Spot tip. This is my spot. Oops. It's nothing like fire to bring out the inner man-child in you. We thought that the uh, barbecue may help with the midges, but uh, it didn't do a huge amount. And over the overall course of the holiday, I got absolutely destroyed. But overall, it was well worth it because we had an epic scenery, epic food, epic company. It was beautiful. <laughs>